move on to our next speaker, uh, Joanne Lepasseur, who's chef de cabinet, as we said, of the commissioner for the digital single market, Andrews Ansip. Uh, Joanne has been a member of a cabinet for the Commission of Transport in the EU. He's held many positions in Estonian and European affairs and has been EU advisor to the Prime Minister for five years. And Johan will uh, outline for us the European community's perspective on the necessary steps to completing the d digital single market, the free flow of data, uh, often referred to as the fifth freedom and data protection. Johan, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. I'm very grateful for Barry, of course, that uh, he already made a, a quite a substantial introduction of what the DSM is. And indeed, <clears throat> one might review it as a major undertaking to make sure that the kind of freedoms that we have expected to get from the membership of the EU, the free flow of pers the goods, services, capital and labor, that they also exist in the digital world. And it, I mean, it should be quite natural that uh, um, in the digital domain, where there are no barriers, internet is global phenomenon, uh, it should move everything which is connected with data should move freely uh, without any hindrance. And that is actually not the case. And there is no better place to make this uh, pitch for the digital single market than in Ireland, which is an island uh, in the corner of Atlantic Ocean, and you know how difficult it is to access other markets. Mm. You always have to travel uh, far away and etc. In the digital world, this should not be the case, but unfortunately it is. So that the 16 initiatives that Barry outlined, the main aim is to make sure that the barriers that have emerged, that we, that we managed to demolish them. But we do that in a way that also uh, does not undermine security and trust in the markets and, and societies. And that, I think that is very important. So I, instead of just going through one by one of all the initiatives, I think I will just uh, really stop on the, on the three issues that we still haven't tackled, but we will do that in this autumn. So I will spill the beans a bit with you. Um, firstly, it's the issue of uh, data. Now, as with goods, capital, uh, and services, data within the context of the single market should move freely and securely. Uh, actually, in reality, data is sometimes also connected with the free flow of goods, services, and capital. Mm. So if we don't have the free flow of data, the free flow of capital, goods, and services is also hampered. And that is one of the reasons why we, we look into this. Next year, Europe will have a new general data protection regulation. It's a great piece which deals with the fragmentation issue. I mean, mm. how to make sure that, that there is a clear, uniform standard of protecting private data throughout Europe. Wherever your data is located, it doesn't matter. It's protected in the same manner. But the GDPR only deals with personal data. It does not mm -hmm. deal with non-personal data, like business data or data generated by machines, for example. So what happens with this? And there is, what we've seen in Europe is that there is a emergence of data localization measures that have been taken by national or local governments. And these measures, though they are mainly designed to protect personal data, they actually affect non-personal data as well. Mm -hmm. And by this, they also fragmentize the single market. Now, we need to tackle this. And this autumn, the Commission will propose a measure which will make sure that uh, data, in most cases, when it comes to non-personal data, should be able to flow freely. There should no, not be mandatory restrictions of data in any given uh, member states territory unless there is good national security grounds to do so. Of course there are other issues that are concerned with this as well. I mean for example cloud switch. I mean there are very many cloud service providers how it's how it's possible to switch services and there of course the issue of whether whether we should give 
a, a let's say a switching right or whether we should make sure that the the conditions that, uh, that everybody signs up to uh, are transparent enough, transparent enough so that uh, people in the end of the day can choose themselves how to better manage their data I mean these issues we will we will tackle probably in a, in a manner that does not affect too much the the contractual freedoms of the different parties because that is also very important or there is issue of okay if the taxation data of a German company that uh, makes business in Ireland is actually located in France how then the Irish tax authority for example can have access to this data I mean th this is also important in the context of the free flow so that there is an access right of public authorities in case they have legitimate interest to go after this data. Or security of data as well. I mean, okay, I, I t told that personal data, the, the security of personal data is guaranteed throughout Europe starting from May next year. What about non-personal data? Again, the taxation data, for example. We, we need to make sure that the basic infrastructure is secure enough so that the uh, data can flow freely. But it is important to tackle it, not only because it will uh, open up opportunities for businesses. The, data, the size of the data economy in Europe last year was 60 billion, and it's predicted that if we tackle these measures, it can grow to 739 billion by 2020. So that is an enormous potential which we should uh, grasp. Um, the other issue which I would like to uh, mention is the cyber security and I think and, and when, when, when the free flow of data deals with, the, with the, the, the freedom side of the internal market, the, the cyber security aspect deals with more the how to ma make sure that the, the general environment is secure, trustworthy. It is a very important one. Firstly, how to protect our critical infrastructure. There is a nice directive already in Europe which is called the Network Information Security Directive. It should be implemented again quite soon, but that's not nearly enough. There is an emergence of um, Internet of Things. And how, how, how can we make sure that these products that are placed in the market or the services that are promoted in the market, that they are cyber secure? So what we will do is that we will put a European certification framework that will rely on national certification frameworks so that in the future, if a product is placed in the market, we can be assured that it's also a cyber secure product. Uh, there is also, I think it was just last spring, there were, there were two waves of uh, major cross-border cyber attacks. Uh, they were global in nature, of course. But th there, the issue arises, how, how does Europe <coughs> respond to these uh, attacks? I mean, clearly, uh, cyber security in, in reality is a national domain. Uh, member states should protect it, but, but there is a clear um, scope for cooperation as well, because as, as, I, as I told in the beginning, digital domain is in, in essence a global domain and uh, it cannot be contained uh, within <coughs> national borders. So, Member states need to cooperate on, on these matters, and there is there is scope for improving the corp the operational cooperation between mm -hmm. member states uh, in terms of response to crisis. And the third um, dimension I want to uh, highlight is the platform economy. Again, mm -hmm. a uh, a new, quite a new uh, economic phenomenon. Uh, a bit more than a decade old, uh, a very vibrant and very dynamic one. So it's clear that uh, one must uh, tread very carefully in terms of whether to put any rigid rules in place. But there are issues already that we have uh, seen which have emerged, like the issue of uh, harmful or illegal content and the profilation of this content in internet platforms. How to deal with it? Platforms themselves have been also quite proactive on some of these issues. But again, within the context of the single market, we need to make sure that there are general frameworks in place uh, so that uh, in all different jurisdictions in the single market, 
platforms can operate uniformly. That does not mean that in Europe we should start to uh, harmonize what are sensitive issues or what are delicate issues in different societies. Europe is still uh, a, a combination of 28 uh, sovereign member states, more than 28 different, mm. very vibrant and very diverse societies. And it is up to the, these societies themselves to, to find the right balance of what is harmful, what is not harmful. But that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be rules in place that platforms should tackle with harmful com content once it's notified, that there is a counter notice procedure that if I, for example, feel that something that has been removed by the platform that I have posted and that is not actually in my mind harmful, that I have right to, uh, to complain somewhere and this complaint is taken seriously up, etc. And then there is the other side of it, which is the, the issue of uh, um, uh, business practices in, in the platform economy, in business-to-business -business relationships, big platforms and little players, and whether we should look at the contractual terms uh, and whether, whether there are issues of uh, uh, imbalances that have emerged in this. We launched a public consultation early this year, and the, the first results of this public consultation indicate that indeed there might be issues that needs to be tackled. So these are the three areas that we still haven't yet completed and where the Commission <coughs> will early autumn uh, propose measures. Um, but the majority of the actions have already put on, on the table of the co-legislators and it really up, up, mm. it's really up to the, the member states and the European Parliament to, to agree upon them. And it's important that they do it so rapidly because in the end of the day, it's, it's the issue of whether if an Irishman goes and has a vacation in Spain, that it, he or she can port uh, uh, the Netflix uh, uh, that uh, he or she is used to watch it in Ireland to Spain or to watch uh, the Mayfair and uh, uh, Connor uh, match uh, in, a, in a nice Spanish speech. Uh, speech. Um, so, I mean, th these little things that they give people uh, more freedoms in the digital uh, era, I think that they are very important and they should not be neglected. Mm -hmm. But we rely on the, the, the Estonian presidency, of course, to, to push this, push this uh, agen agenda forward uh, together with mm -hmm. the forthcoming Bulgarian presidency. And we are quite optimistic that by the end of the mandate of this commission, all the measures that are necessary for this rapid development of the digital single market are in place and they can be uh, implemented and then, of course, enjoyed by the general public. Mm -hmm. Thank you.